man and the building up of what man wants. And they said, go to, let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven, and let us make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. And then the Lord came down to see in the city the tower which the children of men had built. And the Lord said, behold, the people are one and have all one language, and this they began to do. And now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. So we know that God cannot have mixture in his church. Nope. And you, if you were to do a study even on mixture throughout, what's that? That's true. Yeah. And throughout the Old Testament, you know, without getting into all that, talks about can't mix, the priest couldn't mix wool and yeah. linen and yeah. so forth, okay? Can't mingle the seed with other seed or whatever. God hates mixture. Babel means confusion. Yeah. And, it, and the Hebrew means by mixing, and it also means fodder. Babel means fodder. It sounds like mother and father. <laughs> <laughs> but fodder means to feed. Yeah. So what's, it, what's Babylon doing? Feeding confusion. Mm -hmm. Feeding mixture. Okay? Now, I want you to just bear with me because this gets really good. This where I came up again with. I thought, wow, I love juicy meat here. <laughs> okay, so we know also God is not the author of confusion. Right? He didn't, he didn't want that tower built right. because he said, go and replenish the earth. Right, mm -hmm. But instead, they wanted to do it that way. And it's the same as in Matthew 28, 19. He said, go into the world and make disciples mm -hmm. one of another. Mm -hmm. Babel was re rooted in pride and the glorification of man. And pride is the big issue behind the Babylonian system. Mm -hmm. Or Babylon the Great. And it also is in the heart. It dwells within the heart mm -hmm. of man. Obadiah 1.3 says, The pride of thy heart has deceived thee, thou that dwells in the clefts of the rock, whose habitation is high, that say, says in his heart, Who will bring me down to the ground? Okay? Though, though thou exalt thyself as the eagle, and though thou set thyself among the stars, thence will I bring thee down, saith the Lord. History tells us, I'm just going to give you a brief history of Babylon, because I thought this was really interesting. And this is just a few of the things. Its splendor of the actual Babylonian city surpassed any city in the, in, the, in the world at that time. It was very religious. And the, just to quote, there were 1,179 temples were found that were um, to Ish, Ishtar, which is the goddess of sex and fertility mm -hmm. of ancient Babylon. And that's where we get Easter from, which I didn't know. So I thought that was interesting. And then they found a hundred, found 180 open air shrines in this actual city of Babylon. And Babylonianism has infiltrated the whole world, religiously, politically, however you want to look at it. So in Genesis 11, the building of Babel was a result of an attempt mm -hmm. to go against God's authority. Okay, that's pretty obvious. Um, and that has not changed today. Who is Babylon the Great? Go back to Revelation. Trying to hurry through this because this is one part of scripture I don't want to leave out. Revelation 8? No, we're going to go to 17. Oh, 17. Okay, so who is Babylon the Great? Revelation 17 tells us she's a woman. Mm -hmm. Okay? I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints, and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great adoration. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots, the abominations of the earth. The word mystery there means hidden or a secret thing, not obvious to the understanding. The angel, or the, the devil will come as an angel of light to deceive. He comes with mixture. He comes with confusion. Right? And if you don't know your word and you don't know truth, you will be drunk on his error. You will be drunk and intoxicated by what this woman is projecting. Okay? And we're going to get to that. So the woman, all through scripture, if you know your word and you know, you know things typically and symbolically and whatever, um, a woman throughout scripture speaks of the church. Yeah. Okay? Okay? Um, You've got in Proverbs the adulterous woman. You've got she's smooth with her lips and you know her, her choice words and whatever. And we'll get into all that. But 
Um, so what it's saying here is that Babylon is a woman. So if Babylon is a woman, and the woman is the church, it's the Babylonian church. I know there's been teaching out there over the years, well, it's the Catholic church. I didn't want to say that, but that's what there's, and I don't know. I, I personally don't think it is. I think it's a part of it, the Babylonian system, just as all the charismatic. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think that that's false. That's right. It's religion. religion. Yeah. All the false religions yeah. Yeah. out there. Okay, so Jeremiah 6 2 says, I have likened the daughter of Zion to a comely and delicate woman. So that's confirming that a woman is symbolically the church, okay? Micah 4 10 says, Be in pain and labor to bring forth a daughter of Zion like a woman in travail. Okay, I said that. It also says in Revelation 17 18 that she's a city. Who's in charge of Babylon? This is where I thought it got really good. Okay, we're going to go to Isaiah 14. I just, I love the scriptures. I love the way there's all these little nuggets of truth. Isaiah 14. Mm -hmm. Isaiah 14, we're going to start reading in verse 4. No, actually, let's start in 3. And it shall come to pass in the day that the Lord shall give thee rest from thy sorrow and from thy fear and from thy hard bondage, wherein thou was made to serve, that thou shalt take up this proverb against the king of Babylon and say, How has the oppressor ceased, the golden city ceased? The Lord has broken the staff of the wicked and the scepter of the rulers. He who smote the people in wrath with a continual stroke, he that ruled the nations in anger, is persecuted and none hindered. The whole earth is at rest and is quiet. They break forth into singing. Yea, the fir trees rejoice at her, at thee, and the cedars of Lebanon, saying, Since thou art laid down, no feller has come up against thee. Hell from beneath is moved for thee to meet thee at thy coming. It stirreth up the dead for thee, even all the chief ones of the earth, and it has raised up from their thrones all the kings of the nations. And they shall speak and say unto thee, Art thou also born, become weak as we? Art thou become like unto us? Thy pomp is brought down to the grave, and the noise of thy vials, the worm is spread under thee, and the worms cover thee. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground which dwell, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thy heart, I will ascend into heaven, and I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. And I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. Okay, let's stop there. Verse 12. How art thou, how art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nations? As I asked, who is in charge of Babylon? Lucifer's in charge of Babylon. Lucifer means light bearer. And 2 Corinthians 11.14 tells us that, starting verse 13 and 14, it says, For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves unto the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed or disguised into an angel of light. So he... His name means light bearer, okay? And what, what does it say he did here? It says, he, he who weakened the nations. To weaken means to overthrow. In other words, he has caused the church to be overthrown on a whole other path, okay? Um, also in 2 Corinthians 11, 15, it says, Therefore, it's no great thing if his ministers also be transformed or disguised as the ministers of righteousness whose end shall be according to their works. Isaiah 14, 12. We just read that, um, and I just gave you that reading. I don't know why that's repeated. So he is the head of the Babylonian church, okay? The false gospel, the fermented wine of her sorceries, has caused the church to be drunk and intoxicated with error through his deception, okay? Um, verse 4, if you go in the same chapter, verse 4 is describing the king of Babylon. Okay, 